Hello to all my beautiful viewers out there. Today, I'm going to be going over my top five favorite pieces from the recently released Kith Winter 2019 collection. So yes guys, as I covered on the channel in the previous video, if you haven't seen that, definitely subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed and go check out that video. That video, I covered the lookbook for the Kith Winter 2019 collection. And if you don't know what a lookbook is, it's essentially a series of photos of models wearing most of the collection. Very rarely does a lookbook showcase the whole collection. Uh, if that was the case, you would see lookbooks with like 80 photos instead of like around 40. Uh, this was the case with the uh, Kith Winter 2019 collection. It did not have every single piece that eventually released on December 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It actually only had, I, it was actually pretty good. It had about, I would say, I'm going to give it 90%. I would say about 90% of the stuff that appeared in the lookbook appeared in the Winter Collection. There's only a few pieces here and there that it didn't appear on the uh, lookbook. Um, and you know what? They also will get mentioned in this top five episode as some of them have earned what I would say is an honorable mention. So what we'll do is we'll go over what I'll say are some honorable mentions, things that didn't make the top five, but I still think are very good. Uh, we'll dive into that first and have a look at my honorable mentions. Okay, so I've got a little, little pad here that I've written them down on. So honorable mention number one, I will say is the Kith Ski Mask or Kith face mask as they're selling it. Uh, it's a really interesting thing that I thought I would just bring up in this collection. Um, I was actually quite surprised it didn't make an appearance on the lookbook, but I could understand why not, because this is kind of a different winter vibe to everything else that was in the lookbook. Um, honestly, there was an interesting conversation had on ASAP Bari's Instagram, where um, major brands these days, brands like Kith, brand, a lot of high-end fashion design brands, are now incorporating face masks and ski masks into their collection but really the really streetwear centered cities of America places like Harlem um, I don't really want to name them all but like New York and stuff like that really fashion heavy cities have actually been rocking face masks for like the past five years and now brands are catching on that they can capitalize on this and are releasing like branded face masks all the time. Now I know some people feel this is a, like a bit of a stab in the back that like now all these brands are capitalizing off of it when really uh, it was the streets that came up with these ideas of wearing face masks as a part of like winter outfits and stuff. You, everyone has their own different points of view on it. I personally don't mind brands capitalizing it off too much. You don't have to buy a branded face mask. If you want to buy a branded face mask, that's totally fine. But I thought it deserves a little spot in the honorable mentions. It didn't appear in the lookbook, but I thought I think it's just a cool piece. Um, I would like to wear face masks, although I don't know how that well that would go because a lot of people would look at me as like, I'm about to rob a place and not like, they wouldn't see it as a fashionable accessory for a full out outfit. They'd be like, bro, which bank are you robbing this time? And like, you know, I, I get it. I get the whole stigma behind wearing a face mask. But obviously, well, obviously in my case, I just want to wear it as part of an accessory for an outfit. So I just thought I'd get an honorable mention. I was kind of surprised that Keith even released it. Um, I went through the whole collection and I was like, oh crap, okay, so we're actually getting one. That was a weird little thing. Uh, the second honorable mention is the Kith ear flap cap. Uh, it appeared in the first couple photos of the previous video uh, from the lookbook. He, uh, the uh, model had the full floral outfit and he had the cap. And I was really into the cap until I saw that it had earmuffs. I understand why it has earmuffs. It's the winter collection. It only makes sense that it would have earmuffs. But... I don't know, if that was just like your standard five or six panel cap with that floral design on it, you would have had me. You would have had me, Kith. I would have bought that. But unfortunately, the earmuffs are kind of a turn off for me. Um, that was just my reasoning behind it. Another honorable mention that hasn't made it into the top five favorite items from this collection is the Kith Initial K, uh, K Mock Crew Neck. Yeah. Um, K Mock crew, uh, crew Neck. No. K Mock Neck Crew Neck. <laughs> what a name. What a name. Anyway, yeah, so it's been dubbed the Kith Initial K Mock Neck Crew Neck. 
Got it that time. Okay, so this is a crew neck sweater with a bunch, a bunch of bright colours on it, as well as some darker tones on one particular sleeve. Um, I thought this was quite a nice piece when I looked at it in the lookbook, um, but when I really thought about it, when I was thinking about my top five favourite items, this is a very nice crew neck sweater. Um, the thing is, though, that uh, most of the colours that are really vibrant on this sweater, the white, the red, the light blue, they're all major Tommy Hilfiger colors, and I kind of already have, I already have this sweater here. This sweater here kind of just covers all of those colors that I would need from this sweater. So I didn't put the K Mock Neck Crew Neck sweater in my top five because I already have a very similar sweater, as you can see, um, that covers all those colors. So I don't really need it. So it, I just thought I'd give it an honorable mention though because it is a very nice piece. And if I didn't have that sweater, I would consider picking this up. This, oh my God, I'm gonna try and say it again. This mock neck crew neck sweater. <laughs> Who came up with these names? Why do they make them tongue twisters for me? It just makes it so much harder. Uh, the fourth item that I've put in honorable mentions, um, I honestly thought this one was going to be a little bit more expensive than it actually appeared to be on the Kith Winter Collection. It still is very expensive. Um, that's the one critique I always say about on the channel, that Kith is just a little bit too expensive for me. Um, Mainly, mainly when it gets converted to Australian dollars, I just get a, like it really hits me um, how expensive this actually is because I can see it in my own currency. Like when I buy something that's two hundred American dollars, I'm like, ah, it's two hundred, that's fine. But then when it converts to Australian dollars, it's really like three hundred or three thirty, and then I'm like, oh my god, it's so expensive. And because Kith automatically um, changes currencies to whatever region you're from. I get to see it in my money, and then I'm just like, whoa, whoa, whoa Kith, way too expensive. I mean, no, I'm not saying, Kith, please don't change it so we can only see it in American dollars. It is very helpful that I can see it in my own um, currency, but it's just very much a shock factor that I see it in my own currency, because now I'm like, yo, this is expensive. But um, yeah, the piece that I'm talking about for my final honorable mention is the Kith Padded Utility Vest in the Soft Black. Uh, this was worn in the lookbook with a bunch of floral stuff. Um, I thought it was a very nice outfit worn in the lookbook because the padded vest added a little bit of simplicity to a very loud outfit. Um, the padded vest came in at 415 Australian dollars. I honestly thought, all things considered, padded vest, Kith branding, I thought it was going to come in around the $600 mark. Um, but coming in at 415 actually made it a little bit more affordable. I say like I say a little bit more affordable, but 415 Australian dollars is still a lot of money. But um, yeah, I personally was a little bit surprised by that. Um, would I pick this up if I had a spare 415 dollars lying around and had nothing else to buy? Yeah, maybe. But I thought I would just mention it as it is a very nice piece. I just think it's a little bit too expensive for me as I haven't dived into the utility vest. Um, styles and I don't feel comfortable spending $415 to dive into that market. Um, I would like to buy a cheap utility vest to wear over the top of hoodies to start off trying out those styles and then if I like it maybe I'll dive into more expensive and nicer options but I think the $415 one is still just a bit too pricey for me to dive into but I thought I would give it an honorable mention because it is still very nice it is a very nice piece I like the detailing that the um, the buckles are Kith branded, so the straps on the buckles are embossed with Kith in it. It's got a very um, utilitarian belt buckle. It looks very nice. It does look very nice. Um, so unfortunately, all those honorable mention pieces do, did not make it into the top five. And now, without further ado, I think it's time we get into the top five pieces, my top five favorite pieces from the Kith winter 2019 collection so let's dive in at number five okay so item number five in my top five favorite pieces from the kith winter 2019 collection we have the kith floral bucket hat now this was worn together with a lot of the other floral prints um now that the actual collections released there were actually more floral printed stuff than was shown in the lookbook so you may notice some extra floral stuff in my top five here that you did not see in the lookbook. Um, definitely go check the collection out. I can definitely provide the link in the description section below if you guys are interested in now having a look. Uh, not too much of it sold out. The box logo shirt sold out 
and the um uh the the navy floral hoodie that one that we discussed a lot on the channel i thought that one was that uh, that one was very nice those unfortunately sold out but the rest of the collection is still available at the current time so i would definitely say check it out but yeah at number five it was the kith floral bucket hat uh it retails for 110 australian dollars which for the bucket hat is quite a lot of money um to put that in perspective the crew neck sweaters the hoodies they're around 250 265 so the bucket hat simply just the hat accessory is half the price of a full sweater of a full hooded sweater hooded sweatshirt um it is a little bit pricey but i would say i would say it's it's almost at the point where it is too expensive but it wouldn't i wouldn't say that it is oh i wouldn't say it's at the point where i wouldn't buy it i'm just saying it's very close to the point where i wouldn't buy it due to the price um i think it's a very very nice piece the colors just pop really well the floral print looks really nice the simple kith branding on one side of the uh, bucket hat beautiful i actually really really like this piece um but the price is a slight turn off for an accessory i think 110 australian dollars is just a little bit too much for a bucket hat i mean that's just my personal opinion i see hats specifically bucket hats caps uh beanies i usually see them around the like max 50 dollar mark so 110 is kind of blowing that a bit out of proportions that's like double that so i i had to leave it at number five but i did think it was a very nice piece and i would say that i would put it at spot number five um let me know if you disagree with me with that maybe this is your favorite piece definitely let me know in that comment section below what your fifth favorite piece is but without further ado we should move on to piece number four now item number four on my top five favorite items from the kith 2019 winter collection we have an item that did not make an appearance in the lookbook um surprisingly actually because this is a very very nice piece uh we have the kith floral panel crew neck in the ivory color now there were two colors that dropped there was the navy and the ivory the navy crew neck sweater i wasn't really feeling the navy one as much for one reason and they could have changed this and then they would have had me but the reason i wasn't feeling the navy one was because on the navy crew neck sweater they have two sewn seams that go down the chest right but on the navy one they did the stitching in the ivory color or in a light color and it just stands out too much on the chest there versus the color that i do actually prefer more which is the ivory color and the color on the ivory stitching is the same color as the ivory sweater so the stitching seamlessly blends into the actual crew neck sweater so it looks a lot nicer i don't like it on the navy blue because it's so apparent because you notice the stitching straight away if they change the stitching color to the exact same color as the Na navy crew neck sweater it would have been so much better i would have put that at item number four but because of that different color and stitching it's that little detail right there that makes me say that item number four is going to be the ivory color for the floral crew neck sweater it's a really nice crew neck sweater i love the kith uh, branding on the chest there the floral print all over is super super nice um this might be a little bit too exotic for some people some people might see this print all over and be like ah it's, it's too much um if you were interested in these floral prints and don't know how to wear them i don't want to act like some style guru but these pieces because they speak loud volumes because they're so loud and in your face if you want that to work well with an outfit usually either have the whole outfit speak as loud so then the whole outfit seems like it works as one like shown in the lookbook or have everything else toned down and let the sweater do the talking so have sim uh, single colored pants have uh single colored shoes on and then have the sweater on top and let the sweater do the talking i really like this ivory sweater and i think it deserves spot number four as i would wear this with black chinos black jeans and maybe just a pair of white air forces or white jordan ones i personally think that would be a really nice outfit and that's why i've put the kith ivory crew neck sweater at item number four now we shouldn't delay it any further let's have a look at item number three okay so item number three in my top five favorite items from the kith winter 2019 collection I will have to place number three 
on the Kith floral puffer jacket. This was shown in the first three photos on the actual lookbook. Uh, I thought this piece was very nice. The attention to detail was very well done on Kit's behalf. Um, also looking into the description, it looks like they've got the fill, the down for the actual jacket to, you know, keep its warmth and everything like that from a sustainable source. Um, obviously, uh, the animals would still be injured in the process of, of obtaining the fill, but it looks like it's more sustainable and less, I would say, <laughs> less like an internment camp and in prison. And I'm sure that this sustainable source is a lot more animal friendly than versus to cheaper prison like sources for the fill. So I've got to give them some props for being slightly more sustainable than other places. Uh, the jacket is very well designed. I like the tactical um, adjustments on the sides that you can make. It has two tactical uh, belt. Uh, but, um, buckles and you can tighten them making it tighter around the waist um, this is a preference for me I don't usually like puffer jackets at all I just quickly looking at my collection of clothing which is just over there by the way um, I don't actually have any puffer jackets I don't have anything that looks extremely bulky on me um, I think because I'm already quite a big bulky guy I don't think I need clothing that makes me even bigger um, I kind of like clothing that is a little bit slimmer, uh, especially with jackets and, you know, um, overcoats and extra layers that I would put over the top of a hoodie, which is exactly what I would do with this puffer jacket situation. Now, that's not to demerit the puffer jacket in any way. It's just that me personally, I'm not a huge puffer jacket guy. It just, I don't think it looks nice on me, but I still think that the floral print actually really complements the actual overall uh, shape and look of the actual puffer jacket here. Uh, personally, I, now that I get to see better uh, photo shots of the actual jacket, there are some little nitpicking designs that I sort of don't like, but don't fuss me too much. Um, just like the ivory crinex sweater and the navy crinex sweater, the floral ones for number four, um, it has lines going down it halfway through the, um, the jacket and kind of splits it up. Um, not hugely impacted by that, but it would have been just nicer to have them removed and then just have it as like the black canvas with the floral print on it. I don't think it, these lines are really necessary, but that's just how I feel. Um, again, doesn't take away from the jacket. That's just what my little adjustment would have been. Or if they were going to do those stitching lines down the chest, maybe do them in the same color as the overall base cam uh, canvas color of the puffer jacket. So do them in black lines instead of the white, just so they're not as noticeable. That's my like very few nitpicking details. I still think this is a very lovely piece. Uh, I put it at number three. It would have been higher up on my list. The only issue is, is that this puffer jacket comes in at a whopping 820 Australian dollars. It is not cheap. And just to compare the puffer jackets um, in the collection that are different colors that do not have the floral print, a 745 Australian dollars. So if this puffer jacket was just that little bit cheaper, that 745 price, I might have considered bumping it up to the uh, second, maybe even the first place. But because of its hefty price, it has brought it down a little bit in my top five favorite pieces, uh, mainly because it's not as affordable. And I think affordability should always be considered when it comes to reviewing pieces and looking at pieces. Um, Unless, of course, we're talking about luxury brands and things like that, but I would consider Kith a lifestyle brand, so not necessarily a brand that should have really hefty prices. But that's just my personal opinion. You may disagree and say Kith is a bit more bougie, a bit more luxurious, but I see it as more of a luxury brand, so I don't think it should have such steep prices. Uh, either way, this puffer jacket, wonderful, wonderful piece. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave it at number three. But I still think that's a very fair assessment of the puffer jacket. Maybe if I became a big bowler or something, maybe I'll be able to afford it one day and it won't be seen as such a luxury item to me. But I, I, I don't want to count my chickens before they roost, you know. I, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon either. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to leave this piece at number three. And we should definitely move on to item number two. Now, this piece I was not actually 100% too keen on when I saw it in the lookbook. I think it was because of the way it was portrayed in the actual photos. Um, I looked at it more personally, and now that I'm able to look at it as just a standalone piece, I actually think that I could wear this with more outfits styled more in my aesthetic. Um, I could wear this piece with a lot of 
turn down outfits, you know, wear like a black jacket over the top of it, um, wear an overcoat over the top of it, and let the hoodie do the speaking. I've given it slightly away by saying what it is there, but for item number two, it is the Kith Floral Williams 3 hoodie in the ivory color. So uh, we had a look at the various colors in the lookbook and for item number two, I'm going to put the ivory color as my second favorite piece from this collection. Uh, I didn't think that I would like it as much. Um, there was the option instead of going for the ivory color of going for a light heather gray. Uh, I just personally didn't think that the floral print over the top of it pops as much on top of the gray colorway versus the ivory color. I think it looks nicer on the ivory. So I think I could wear this ivory hoodie um, very much as I said with a lot more turned down outfits. Um, single colored pants, chinos, jeans, whatever with single colored um, overcoats, leather jackets, denim jackets and then having this hoodie underneath the denim jacket so the hoodie can do the speaking. So when I wear it in this outfit, I can have the floral hoodie bringing all the attention to my upper body, but then having the jackets over the top of it just to tone it down a bit so we don't go a little bit too crazy here. That's how I personally would wear it. Um, I wouldn't wear this hoodie by itself as it is, as you can see, quite a loud piece. Um, if I am to wear loud hoodies, I would wear a basic over jacket just so it turns it down, turns the whole outfit down just a little bit. That's how I feel about it. Uh, this hoodie comes in at a relatively expensive price for a hoodie at $285. Um, the quality of the hoodie is 500 GSM. I think it was GSM was the rating that they gave it. Uh, let me just check quickly. Yes, 500 GSM fleece cotton fabric. Now, to put that into comparison, it, is, uh, it has an asking price of 285 Australian dollars. The Der Schatze hoodies that I've been so keen on recently and have been covering on the channel, they come in at 500 GSM cotton as well. Not necessarily fleece, but cotton. So... They come in at a retail price at around, with the shipping, 120 Australian dollars, about half the price of this Kith hoodie. So it is a little bit expensive for this Kith item, but I do have to say it is a very nice item that I would consider picking up in the future. Um, if it doesn't sell out in a couple weeks' time, maybe I'll treat myself to it uh, as a Christmas present. Um, definitely works with that holiday season, but yeah, it is a little bit expensive. So if I had a lot of Christmas cash lying around, maybe I'd consider picking it up. But either way, regardless of the price, the actual item itself is very, very nice. I like the use of color, the ivory canvas with the floral print over the top of it. I think the ivory brings out and actually lifts the floral print up a little bit and makes it look a lot better. Uh, that's how I feel and that is item number two. Are you ready for item number one? Now, can you guess item number one? Item number one, unfortunately, I did mention it before, it sold out. Um, the piece, according to a lot of the comment sections in, or a lot of the comments in the comment section of the previous video, it apparently was the must have piece from this collection. Especially amongst the Kith enthusiasts, they were saying it was the must have piece of the collection. Personally, I do really like this piece and I'm so sad that it sold out because this would have been the piece that I would have bought first if I had the spare cash lying around to pick up any of the pieces from this collection. Now, can you guess what it is? It is the Kith Floral Williams 3 hoodie in the navy color. Now I know it feels kind of cheap me putting essentially the same hoodie in a different color on second and first but I'm going to explain why. So, the actual ivory hoodie because of the color of the overall canvas, allows the floral print to cohesively work with the actual canvas. However, the navy canvas used on the Williams 3 hoodie here at item number one, the floral print pops and actually contrasts on the navy print. I personally like this more as it brings more attention to the hoodie because you really notice the floral print sticking out of the actual hoodie versus the ivory hoodie where it contrasts and you don't actually notice it as much. Now you may feel differently about that, but that's personally how I feel. Now because of the darker use of a navy canvas, I personally think that the navy hoodie would actually work better for my aesthetic as I wear a lot darker clothing, as you can plainly see. 
So I think that the navy hoodie would personally work for my aesthetic very well. I do like the actual floral print, so I think it is a very nice hoodie indeed. And it kind of just ticks off all the boxes that I'd be asking from a piece from the Kith Winter 2019 collection. Now, as I mentioned, unfortunately it's sold out, but I'm going to assume that it went for the exact same price as all the other Kith hoodies as well, which was a Australian retail price of $285, which as I expressed with the ivory hoodie, is actually quite a bit of money. But I think out of all the pieces in the Kith collection um, for, for their winter collection in 2019, this, the, this would be the piece that I would pay the amount for without really second guessing it too much. And I would say that it is worth the money that I have to spend to buy it. Unfortunately, I can't buy it now because I missed out on it. But who knows, maybe a couple years down the track it might appear on Grailed, someone might actually want to get rid of it in like an extra large or a 2XL, so I might actually be lucky a couple years down the road for now. It's not the end of the world because I missed out on the Floral Williams 3 navy print um, floral hoodie. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. But I thought it deserves item number one as it just looks the nicest, it could work the best with my aesthetic, I would pay, I reckon the price to the overall design is worth it. So I think it just ticks all the boxes that I would need out of a Kith item. So this at item number one is going to be the Kith Floral Williams 3 hoodie in the navy colour. I know some of you may feel like it's a little bit cheap that I've gone with this essentially the same hoodie in two different colours, but I felt like my justification on the colouring was the reasoning why I think that each of them deserve their own little slot. But those are my top five favourite items in the Kith Winter Collection. I will put the link in the description section below. And let me know, guys, which are your top five favourite items from the Kith Winter 2019 Collection. Ooh, lots to say about the collection. I do really, really like it. If you want me to cover every single piece on the Kith Winter Collection, I can definitely do that now that it's released. Or if you'd rather just have a look at it yourself, definitely just hit the description section below and you can have a look at the collection yourself. And let me know what your top five favourite items are from this collection. Let me know how you feel about my top five list or mention your top five list in the comment section below. Did you pick up any of the items from the Kith Winter Collection when it dropped? Let me know if you had any success with that or if you uh, copped a big fat L. Either way, let me know your experiences in the comment section below. Don't forget, while you're heading on down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video come on guys like the video you, you click the big old thumbs up uh don't forget to follow all these socials in the description section share the video with your mates share it on facebook twitter reddit i'm doing it but if you guys could help me out that would be so so wonderful of you thank you so much if you are thank you to everyone that's been subscribing recently uh we just hit 1700 subs i gotta say I, I wow i i remember a couple of months ago i was on 1400 now 1700 it's crazy guys, thank you so much for joining in on the channel and subscribing to it. Uh, that is the Kith Winter 2019 collection, my top 5 favourite items from it. So until the next streetwear video guys, until the next sneaker video, I'll catch you later.